Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here at the Lab Coats on Back Order, and it's time for this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match. What we're doing for this week is, since on this coming Friday, February 3rd, the full set of Sun and Moon for Pokemon TCG does officially go on sale, and they will be obtainable in the online game. I'm going to do a bit of a, a stepping stone to get into that. Now, I want to do a video, a special video, on Friday, showing off my first opening of packs online and putting together a custom deck using the cards, but... I want to show off this that I picked up. It is one of the theme decks that was available up to two weeks before the expansion came out. So there's like some cards from Sun and Moon that are currently usable online. And that's what we're going to do with take, or taking a look at the Bright Tide theme deck featuring Primarina as the main Pokemon. But before I get into that, I want to point out that as I'm doing for the next little while here, a viewer named TP Cubed had given me some code cards or some codes for some uh, online obtainables. And I was saying, check the comments for the code for the week, and you can it's basically first come, first serve. If you get that code first, and put it into the game, and you'll get yourself a booster pack or whatever it is that the code is for. I'm switching it over to putting it in the description, actually, because my initial thought was, once I upload a video and schedule it to be published, I'll put a comment on it right then, put the code in there. That way, as soon as the video publishes, you'll see the comment immediately. But... Apparently I can't put a comment on a video that has not yet been published. So, just to save time and make sure that the code is there the moment this video does go published, it is in the description. So click on down there, grab that code, and if you're the first one to redeem it online, get yourself a booster pack of cards. I believe this week the code is a breakthrough booster pack, but it'll say in the description what it's for. Anyway, let's move on here and check out what the Bright Tide deck has to offer. I haven't even looked at this yet, so I don't know what cards are in here. So, I can't customize it, it looks like, but I see we have a couple of Lillipop and Hurtier with the ability Treasure Hunt. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may put an item card from your discard pile into your hand. Kind of uh, reminiscent of the Stoutland Search in the video game. We've got Chinchow and Lantern. I notice this is a Water and Lightning deck. I would have expected Water and Fairy, given what Primarina's two types are in the video game, but I guess I'll work with this. If they give me a Rough Seas card, that would be awesome, but usually the theme decks do not include a stadium card. We have Psyduck here, that can confuse Pokemon. Golduck, scratch for 20, double jet 60 times, discard up to two energy cards, water energy from your hand, 60 damage for each energy you discarded this way, plus free retreat cost on Golduck, that's kind of unexpected. I guess they say Golduck is kind of a fast swimmer though, so that might be the idea there. And Corsola would be good to start with if you can get Call for Family, just load up your bench with basic Pokemon. Okay, I'm trying to strategize with these cards. I'm trying to think what can I do with the cards that they've uh, given me in this theme deck because usually I'll put my own strategy into a deck. I gotta see what they've given me to work with. So Spear can peck bugs, <laughs> do more damage to grass types. We've got a shelter and a cloister. Cloister's not bad. I saw it in the pre-release video, the match that I recorded. Headlock has a special effect regardless of what you flip heads or tails. You can do more damage or paralyze. And guard press can do or basically the target does less damage, does 20 less. No, sorry. This Pokemon takes 20 less damage. Okay, so it's not affecting the opposing Pokemon, it's just on Cloyster. Wingle is here, we got Poplio, of course. Brione, Disarming Voice, 50, and causes confusion, not bad. And we have, oh, you got Disarming Voice too, wait a minute. Why does Brione's Disarming Voice do more than Primarina's? I'm not sure, but both cause confusion. And Sparkling Aria can heal Primarina by 30, that's not bad. And what do you got, Togedemaru? Defense Curl and Discharge. Discard Lightning Energy. Discard all Lightning Energy. 30 damage for each card you discard. So a couple of the Pokemon in this deck are going to be like Discard Energy to do more damage. Got a couple of Basic Potions. Got a couple of Timer Balls. One Ultra Ball. Two Nest Balls. Got some Energy Retrieval, or one of those. We got a couple of How cards. Draw three more. It's kind of cool how they make your main... Not sidekick, so to speak, but like, you know, your main buddy in each generation. That's the draw three cards. It was Charon back in Gen 5, Tierno for Gen 6, and now How takes that role for Gen 7. You could put four Charon, Tierno, and How into a single deck, I believe. That would be speeding up your draw support by 3 times 12. That would be, what, 36 extra cards. That's like half the deck right there. Anyway, of course, you can only play one per turn. We have a single Lily. Draw cards until you have six cards in hand, but if it's your first turn, draw until you have eight. And a Professor Kakui. Draw two cards. During this turn, your opponent's attacks... No, your opponent's... Your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Yeah, woo! He's all about the damage and the attacks, right? And we got 8 basic lightning energy and 12 basic water energy. We got ourselves a Poplio coin. So it's a basic breakdown of the theme deck. As I say, these are usually not very competitive because look how many Pokemon. We got 28 Pokemon, only 12 trainer cards. Generally, you're going to see that kind of number flipped. And on top of that, you're going to see a lot less energy. Usually, 
10 to 12 energy is usually pretty good as long as you have ways to accelerate it and get it into play. So these are good kind of things to get you started into Pokemon TCG if you're new to the game, but definitely not the most competitive thing that you could put together. But since I'm going to go into some theme deck battles online, we'll see how well the Primarina theme deck of Bright Tide does. Yeah, you know what? Where's my rough seas? Exactly. Anyway, we'll see how well Primarina and its friends do against the opponents. I'll see if I can get a couple of battles depending on how long they take. And this is actually the first time I've been doing a theme deck battle on the channel because I usually will just do the custom battles. So it'll be kind of cool as a bit of a change of pace to see what Bright Tide can do. Let's jump into some battles right now. Alright, so the Bright Tide theme deck up against the Bright Tide theme deck. Interesting. Mirror match going on here against Sinst... Sinst... Ra. I think that's how you might pronounce that one. So we're getting to call the coin flip. We land heads. I chose heads. Let us take the first turn and see if we can get a Corsola to set up with. I forgot already. How many Corsola are in my deck? Well, not quite one. However, we have a good card to start with Lily. If I can play everything out from hand that I possibly can do, I can maximize my draw support. She lets me draw eight cards, being the first turn of the match. We'll drop the other Poplio to the bench as soon as the opponent is ready to roll. I can also attach a Water Energy to get things rolling there as well. And minimize the cards in hand, maximize draw support using Lily. So we have a Hurtier. Let's put this to the Poplio. Oh, look, they get to lead with Corsola. Excellent job, game. Thank you. But let's play the Lily and draw five more cards. There's still no Corsola to be seen. Let's just drop everything that we have here, I suppose. And nothing else to play from hand. I can't attack being the first turn. So let's just pass it over to my opponent as Corsola is going to get to call for family with just a single energy attached. I kind of was hoping that I'd go up against uh, an Incineroar deck for the type advantage. That can be really bad if we went up against a Decidueye deck. Decidueye destroyed us plenty enough in the Sun and Moon generation. If you missed the uh, Friday episode of Pokemon Moon on the playthrough. Yeah, we dealt with a Decidueye. Fun time. Anyway, the opponent plays a Nest Ball. Search for a basic Pokemon from the deck and put it right onto your bench. Now, I said during the pre-release video, you, why wouldn't you call for family? Hmm. Anyway, we can get Brione in play. <clears throat> I'm not going to play the Herdier just yet because the ability, when I play it from hand to evolve a Pokemon, then... I get to look for an item card in the discard pile, and I currently do not have items in there, so it's kind of a waste. But I'll play Kikui right now. We can do 50 damage with the Wave Splash. And I guess that's all we can really make use of. Let's just do the Wave Splash for 50 thanks to Kikui's added power. And yeah, I was saying that the you think Nest Ball would replace Pokeball, because Pokeball says flip a coin if heads, search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into hand. And the Nest Ball simply says, don't flip a coin, search for a basic Pokemon and put it right to your bench. However, the reason Pokeball would still be usable, or useful to be used, is because... Oh look, they're getting Grione set up too, aren't they? Alright then, so let's go into Primarina. We'll serve some water energy in hand, we'll put a lightning onto Primarina. Uh, we don't need to go for the overkill. 30 damage will take it down, so let's go for the Disarming Voice. They're going to hit me for 100 back when that Primarina comes up from their bench. However, if I can find a decent item in the prize cards, or we can find Brione, I suppose that could be useful as well. Anyway, back to my thought, Pokeball. So let's say you're going to get a Pokemon such as Hoopa EX or Shaman EX with an ability that says when you play from hand, put it on your bench, have some sort of special effect going on, right? If you played Nest Ball, it does not go into your hand. Hoopa EX or Shaman EX will go right to your bench. That would not activate its ability, so therefore Pokeball still has its purpose. Of course, more than likely you're going to want to use, say, Ultra Ball to get those Pokemon in hand because basically Pokeball being a coin flip, how often do you flip tails? Let's be honest here, you know, it's supposed to be 50% chance, how often does it feel like a 50% chance? Alright, so we are taking some damage here, I'm going to evolve Brione, we'll add an energy to it, as Primarina stays in the active spot, slightly bit of a risk here, a slight bit of a risk, but I'm going to go with the... Spark, or sorry, the disarming voice, minimal damage, but if we can get the confusion on this thing, that will stall things out a little bit and keep our Primarina in play. Come on, Sonata, you got this. I like looking at the cards sometimes and pretending that they are my main Pokemon from some of the video games that I've played. The one thing that sort of uh, takes away from that is the fact that if I have a second Primarina in play, 
Which one's Sonata, right? Either one could be. I could just pretend whichever active Primarina is, or whichever Primarina is active is currently Sonata. If he gets knocked out, the other one is him after a revive. I don't know, just kind of trying to make this a little bit more unique to my own experiences in the world of the Alola region. So if you can hit yourself, I can knock you out with a Sparkling Aria and heal myself. Perfect, right there. All right. So we'll continue powering up the other Brioni on the bench. How is going to give us three more cards. And let's just heal up a bit more. And here's what we're going to do. I'm now going to play Herdier. I'll bring back that potion into hand. We'll play that again, heal 30 more. And then use Sparkling Aria to knock out the active Primarina and heal another 30 damage. So we just healed 90 on this single turn and got a knockout. How cool is that? So prize number two is the last prize of the game, because as you can see, that was a pretty short match, but theme decks are decent when you go against other theme decks. Against a custom deck, not quite so much. I wonder if I should try this against a custom deck. Just to keep things interesting, I'll see if I can use this theme deck in a custom battle, and if so, I'll come right back with that. If not, you'll see another theme deck battle in just a moment. So what I did was go ahead and it wouldn't let me use the theme deck outside of the theme deck battles, but I went and cloned the deck into a standard deck. So I'm using the theme deck of Bright Tide against somebody's custom deck. Let's see how well a theme deck stands up against. Well, first of all, we're already going to lose. We lost the coin flip. But let's see how well a standard theme deck does against a custom designed deck of the opposing side. But let's see if Professor Chaz has the skills to pull through. <laughs> hey, it's the Professor Chaz channel. I'm going to mulligan. With a theme deck, that's kind of embarrassing. However, we see double colors and lightning. I didn't see what types of energy the opponent has, but we see a dragon theme or dragon symbol deck box. So, we'll see some dragon types. Why couldn't I have fairy types in this deck? That would be amazing. However, I do get to start with Corsola. We'll drop a Togemaru and a Chinchou to the bench as well. I can start going for the call for family and get some basics out. First idea, I want to get a... Lillipop, and I would say Brione probably is the best idea. They're going to lead Staryu. Oh, hey, Lily. I'll make use of you. Let's drop an energy to Corsola. Go for the Lily right now. Drop five. Yeah, that's my first turn. Five more cards. We find Wingle. I'm not going to play the Wingle. I want to get other Pokemon. No, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to play the Wingle. I have other basic Pokemon that could evolve up, so... Wait, am I I'm taking the first turn? I didn't realize that. All right, then. So we can't attack just yet. I should have realized... Oh, hang on. What does Lily say exactly? If it's my first turn. Okay, so that's why I thought I was... Ooh, uh, I see a Mew over there. That's why I thought I was able to attack. I thought they got the coin flip. I lost the coin flip, but they gave me first turn. Okay, now I know what's happening. Hey, think we're going to see any Pokemon GX on the field? All right, we see a Star Me in hand. that can't evolve just yet. Free Retreat. I forgot about that. That is awesome. And they're going to encounter... You know what they really should have done? Uh, I suppose I can get any Pokemon, but if they really wanted to, they could have used my call for family. Nope. I'm thinking Mew EX. See, I don't know what I'm talking about here, apparently. I'm saying a bunch of crazy ideas that do not make any sense whatsoever. Okay. I don't want to play Kikui yet, because we're not going to do any damage with Corsola. I'd rather make use of the plus 20 damage when I can actually hit them or something. So we evolve. Chinch out a Lantern. I could... What can you do for damage? Aqua Spark could do 120, so we're going to put an energy onto you. I'm now going to call for family and get some Pokemon onto the bench. As I say, Lillipup is one option. I'm going to go with a Popular, the other one. Now, if only we could find ourselves a Brione. I might want to leave the Corsola up there one more turn just to take a hit. I could retreat it for that one energy we have attached. We see a Pikachu on the other side. Now there is a Star Me with Space Beacon and Star Freeze. I'm just going to go for the basic encounter again. Get another Pokemon in hand. Do we get to see Star Me break? No, we see a Zapdos. That thing's got some power to it. 120, and it does 20 to its own... Is it 20 to its own or 40 to its own Pokemon? Hey, we found Brione. All right, let's go ahead and drop a Water Energy onto the Lantern. And... I don't have any items used yet, so again, Herdier is going to stay in hand. Let's go for another Call for Family. What else do we want on our bench? I guess Shelter would be pretty good, because we do have Cloyster. We can get that possibly in play at some point. 
So the next turn, I could retreat the lantern, or sorry, retreat Corslet into lantern and knock out this Mew. What is your HP? 110. You can probably take some decent hits, although they're getting themselves set up with Raichu with Circle Circuit. 20 damage times all of their bench Pokemon. Currently, that will be 60. Well, 80 if they retreated the Mew. But with only 90 HP, we could knock it out with Lantern. Look at all these Zapdos. This is too much power. You're getting charged up too much over there. All right, so let's evolve into Brione. I mean, evolve Brione into Sonata there, the uh, Primarina. Let's retreat into Lantern. Let's just do the damage. We'll go with Aqua Spark. 120. So there goes the first Pokemon on the opposing side. Got ourselves a Shelter. So the smarter thing would have been to bring up the Raichu because it has free retreat. Actually, does the Star eat me? No, it doesn't. They could have brought up. Oh, so they're getting this. Uh, you're getting this one powered up, right? Why does the theme deck not include Lysandre? You can one shot my Lantern. And a Professor Sycamore discard your. You've got a Lysandre. Can I borrow that for a second, please? You should be able to play Herdier. Search your opponent's discard pile for a supporter and use it. You know that would be too much power, would it? Okay. So let's go ahead and drop an energy onto Sonata. We can destroy this in one hit. It's actually weak to lightning as well, so even if we didn't have the water energy, we could still destroy this in one hit. Let's just go with the Aqua Spark. It's going to get another prize for us. Unfortunately, that other Zapdos is going to come up and destroy our Lantern, which is definitely not super, super good. Does anybody have free retreat? I don't believe anyone on my side does. If I can get the gold duck out here, that'd be good. But nope, no free retreat, unfortunately. I think who should I let take the hit? Because if I could get Sonata powered up in time, then I could destroy the Zapdos in one hit when I play Kikui to do 120 to the Zapdos. On the other hand, Sonata can survive one of these what is it? Raging Thunder attacks. And there goes Lantern. We gotta get some energy for Sonata though. Can anyone survive the hits? I doubt it only Sonata could probably have enough to survive that. Let's let Corsola go up. I think it's it's done its job. It's run its course. I don't see Golduck in hand, but I do have Psyduck. I'll drop Psyduck in the hope that I can find a Golduck for free retreat. I need energy, but I can't waste Kakui yet. Actually, no, you know what? Let's go a little bit risky. I'm gonna. I can't make use of the extra 20 damage, but by finding an energy, I can start powering up Sonata's disarming voice to cause confusion, if nothing else. I haven't used an item yet, so Herdier is still gonna stay in hand. Go ahead, Raging Thunder my Corsola. It's gonna happen. And a Professor's Letter for even more energy, two more lightning. I wonder if they have any attacks that require to discard energy, because the Starmie's ability. Oh, come on, really? How much are you really going to do to me? Exactly. You survived that. Knock out your Starmie. Come on. Alright, so we have enough to power up for the Sparkling Aria. I'm not going to do that just yet. I do have Golduck, though. Hmm. Let me just see here. Discard Water Energy from hand. Okay. I don't really have that. So, I'm going to... I don't know. I suppose I'll start powering Toga tomorrow, because the Zapdos are all weak to lightning. Let's play the odds. Let's go for the starving voice. Meager 30 damage, but we do confuse the Zapdos. They could Pokemon Center Lady or Full Heal or switch this card out and switch to something with a free retreat like Raichu and then retreat for free. And Zapdos can come back up unconfused, do the damage, but they're just going to pay the cost of retreat. All right, fair enough, I suppose. And Space Beacon discarding a Talon Flame to get two basic energy cards back into hand. Come on, Theme Deck! Give me the energy I need! I can win this one! 80 damage from the Circle Circuit. Now, Golduck would survive that. Anyway, Free Retreat means Golduck is going to come up. Hmm. Can we turn this one around in any way? Not with uh, drawing a potion off. Hmm. So even Corsula can't take the hit. Well, since Golduck can, I might leave it active. I have the option to heal 60 using Potion, playing Herdier, and then playing that Potion again. So, Golduck, 
tough it out, buddy. Don't play a muscle band or anything like that. Come on. You see, I jolt it. Now, if that evolves into the Grass and Lightning type Galvantula, it can hit two of my bench Pokemon for 30 damage. It would apply weakness and resistance to, I believe, the way Galvantula works. And they're going to Ultra Ball for a standard old Pikachu. Actually, you know what? By adding another basic Pokemon, suddenly they can do enough damage to knock out Golduck in one hit. Uh... Oh, well. Again, I am purposely playing at the disadvantage of being unable to use anything super amazing because this is a theme deck versus a custom deck. Hmm. I don't think there's anything that I can really do to save us here. We bite for 20 with Lillipop. See, I could do 60 damage using... Just attaching a lightning energy to Togemaru. I'm going to instead try to stall things out a little bit. Do I need to play anything? Not really. I'm going to start powering up for a hopeful cloister. And let us go with Defense Curl. I'll flip coin. If heads, prevent all damage done. I'm going to get the heads, because come on, you owe me. Yes. No damage being done to Togemaru. Just don't play Lysandre, and it'll be all good. That Zapdos is powering up on the bench. What did I just say? Isn't that always fun? When you're starting to work on something on the bench and the opponent pulls some shenanigans like that? I'm actually pretending to be mad because I do that all the time, so I really can't be mad about somebody playing that on me. No, wait, I can, but I would be hypocritical by doing so. All right, let us... What can we get with the Nest Ball? Find me a decent basic Pokemon. Well, let's go with a Poplio. We do have Brione in hand. Problem being, I have no energy for it. I could play Herdier and get that Nest Ball back. Is it going to help me? No. So let's go for the Defense Curl. Flip heads. Yes, Togedemaru is the beast. It's the tank we needed. If we can flip that 20 more times, the opponent's going to deck out. Well, Zapdos is now ready to attack on the bench. Free retreat, but again, they can't hit me because the effect is on Toby Tomorrow, and as long as it stays active, the defense curl effect remains on the Pokemon. Give me some energy cards, yes! How painful would that be for the opponent? A hand of like 52 cards, whatever they had there, I didn't count, but they have to shuffle all of it back in and draw two. Well, at least you got an energy. And another Toby Tomorrow. Uh, let's start powering up Poplio. I know there's a second Primarina in the deck. Come on, give me the heads. You owe me. I actually got two heads already, so I guess you don't really owe me that. <sighs> this is a destruction fest right here. I did take two prizes. How the heck did I even do that with a theme deck? Yeah, I knocked out Zapdos. Okay, and me. Well... There's not much that I can do here. Togedemaru, get up there! Stall things out again! I'm two cards ahead of the opponent in the deck. I do have the option to keep going for Defense Curl, flipping heads non-stop, and winning this game. Whoops! So that right there, all I'm gonna do is click the Attack Circle Circuit. And they do. Alright. They don't needlessly draw things up by playing a bunch of cards from hand. Drawing out the inevitable. They get the win. But at least you saw some of the cards in play for the theme deck. And you can see just how difficult it is using a theme deck against a custom deck. If you don't customize your own deck and you go into a competitive sort of a format, then you're going to be at a maze or disadvantage. So your best bet is buy some booster packs, trade cards with other players, and try to beef up your deck. Trainer cards are always important in your custom decks. As I say, I generally go for over 30 trainer cards in every deck. But anyway, that's an idea of what the theme deck is like for the Bright Tide featuring Primarina. So that is going to be a wrap for this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match featuring that theme deck of Bright Tide starring the pop star Pokemon itself, Primarina. Actually, I don't remember if that's the species. You know what? I can check it right on the card. I know Brione is called the pop star Pokemon. Primarina is the soloist Pokemon. In fact, maybe I should have been playing with nothing but Primarina in play. Maybe it gains power by being on its own, like, like uh, Lucario with Fight Alone. Or maybe not. It is a theme deck against custom decks. Yes, I've already said. Difficult. Possible to win, but pretty disadvantageous for yourself. Anyway, but this is just the first of our Pokemon TCG online matches for the week. The next one is going to be on Friday, later on in the day, as that is the release day for the new Sun and Moon expansion. 
and my usual format for doing those release day videos is I'm gonna go online drop a bunch of tokens on 10 random booster packs online open all those up on camera see what I get and design a custom deck on day one of Sun and Moon using just the cards from or well, just the Pokemon cards from the uh, the booster packs as well as throwing in some trainer cards from earlier expansions try to make a cohesive you know competitive deck featuring a lot of the new Pokemon and any special energy I might happen to get. I really don't know what all cards are in this expansion. I did check the uh, collection on the uh, Pokemon TCG online, but the majority of the Sun and Moon cards are not yet programmed into the game, so I can't even see what's coming up yet. But I've seen Rainbow Energy, and that's one special energy I know of. All that being the case, all that aside, I'll be doing some uh, online battles using the new cards. I'm going to aim for, what would I be thinking, probably around 4 o'clock-ish. Actually, about the same time that the Pokemon Moon episode on Friday goes up, somewhere around there I'll be jumping in and recording some matches of Pokemon TCG online using the new Sun and Moon cards. So if you happen to be online around that time, either if you don't want to, or I say you can hold off on watching the Pokemon Moon episode if you want to jump into Pokemon TCG online and see if you can randomly encounter me doing some matches. I'm just going to look for some random trainer battles online, see who I can encounter as competitors in the video. And if I happen to find you, you could be in a video for next week's Pokemon, nope, not next week's, for Friday's episode of Pokemon TCG online. But with all that, with me getting all of my ideas mixed up around in my head, I think it's time for me to take a break. I'll get this video ready to roll for the upload and... I suppose that is it. If you like this episode, feel free to leave a like down below and leave a comment letting me know what you thought of the theme deck and how well it works. And have you ever tried using a theme deck against a custom deck? And if so, how well did it go for you? You know, I had some bad luck with card draw. I wasn't able to get the energy I needed. I had ideas in mind for what I could have done, but I just didn't have the cards that I needed at the time. So if you had better luck than I did using theme deck versus custom deck, I'd like to hear your experiences and give you some congratulations for winning because it is, like I say, quite a bit of a challenge. But that is about it. Stay tuned to the outro, which is basically just what's happening now, me talking. But to some links to some other videos that I have done, as well as a link to subscribe to the channel, if you want to get some more daily updates of the world of Pokemon, either Pokemon TCG Online or Pokemon Moon Playthrough, currently going on for the Nintendo 3DS. I also do Monday episodes of news update video thingies, getting you recapped on all the big, big, I was going to say big headlights, headlights, big what am I trying to say? Big highlights, big headlines. There we go. It came out headlights. My brain does that way too much. Mixes two words into one. Anyway, news update video thingies on Mondays. Usually, as long as there's a lot of news to talk about. So much good Pokemon stuff on the channel. So much good Pokemon content. Not so much good speaking stuff. Because obviously, it's just me. I can't do that. But... That's going to be it. Anyway, thanks once again for watching today's Pokemon TCG Live Online match. And come on back on Friday for another one featuring the new Sun and Moon cards. And stay tuned later on today on the channel for our third episode of the week of the Pokemon Moon playthrough. As hopefully we make it to the Battle Tree. That's where I'm heading right now. And then I guess we could probably start looking into some Ultra Beasts. Let's see what's going on there. But with all that, Professor Chaz is now signing off. Thank you once again for watching today's Pokemon TCG Live Online match. And I'll catch you next time.